What up? My name is Macaulay Sexton and this is Sexton Accountability. Let's get right into it. I want to talk about clinicians, people in the medical field. I want to talk about our relationship with them when we are actively in substance use disorder and when we are in recovery or if we are reducing harm in our life. Okay. And in recovery. So when I was actively using, I constantly went to clinicians. And the thing is, is that I was never 100% honest with them. And so they could tell there were very clear signs that I was partaking in substance use and abuse. And so the thing is, is that ultimately they would meet me where I was at. They would, they would meet me where I was at. And so where I was at was a place of avoidance, manipulation, uh, I mean, I can say some more words that sound kind of judgmental towards myself, but that's just the, those are just the facts, dude. That was, that's where I was at. And so that affected the level of care that I received. It, it just did. And so I wasn't being honest about what I was consuming. You know, I am abusing depressants and being prescribed antidepressants. A lot of times people will be abusing stimulants and they're you know, prescribed a stimulant. So it's like double stimulant or they take something that that like literally combats the medication they're prescribed. Like, you know, I was sharing with the abusing depressants and taking an antidepressants thing. So it's like it's it's like self sabotaging in this weird way. And the thing is, is that I can acknowledge a lot of people. They just don't feel comfortable talking to clinicians. It's like this weird authority thing. And I look I can tell you that being willing to work with clinicians, it changed my life. The reason that I became willing is because of, first of all, one person. Her name is Lisa Williams, all right? So this person um, is, is a clinician, is a counselor, and also has experience in recovery. So this is the first time that I was like, oh, I can, trust, I can trust this person because they're not, I can tell they're not fucking bullshitting me. I can tell they're not just coming from a book smarts per- perspective. I don't like that shit, okay? There's value in it. And I'm not discouraging people who, you know, have book smarts. No, Um, there's a lot of my knowledge that came from from reading, you know, but what I'm saying is that for a lot of people with substance use disorder, it's like, bro, we have a fucking bullshit radar and we're usually very good at bullshitting as well. So when we hear something that seems like bullshit, we're like, "Eh, I'm not I don't fucking trust that. Like, I'm not on board with that, basically. So. The, that was the first time that I started being willing because there was someone who was meeting me where I was at, but they were also sharing their lived experience. And I was like, oh shit, okay. You know, I mean, this person literally like even called me out on stuff. So that's what opened it up for me. So after that, when I came home to Austin, because I, I was in Mississippi for rehab, bro. <laughs> I'll just leave it at that. Was, wasn't, wasn't a big fan of Mississippi. It was very beautiful there but wasn't a big fan. Uh, but let's, let's keep it moving. So basically I came back to Austin and I, I got an addictionologist. Okay. And for those that are unfamiliar, an addictionologist is someone who practices addiction medicine. And what do I mean by that? They prescribe according to knowledge when it comes to substance use disorder. They usually a lot of times are in recovery themselves. And so they understand and I found that there was a lot less stigma when I went to an addictionologist, which was so backwards for me because I was like, if I go to an addictionologist, then I'm labeling myself as an addict and then like I'm going to be treated differently and all this other shit. And for me, it was quite the opposite to where, you know, my first addictionologist was like, you know, I prescribe meds, you know, this isn't about, he didn't say this, but it wasn't about shaming or punishing. It was like just about being informed basically. And so that's when I started being really open and honest with, you know, an actual person who could prescribe medications. All right. Because the first person was just a counselor and they were not prescribing meds. So through that process, I learned a lot. I was prescribed effective medications that were not addictive. I took them for the first couple years of my recovery. Um, That addictionologist ended up passing away. Um, Dr. Munden was such an amazing person, such an amazing person. And uh, it just, it changed my life. I, I, it, it changed the way that I looked at clinicians. I, you know, since then have done, you know, more traditional therapy. Um, like I said, I, I went to an addictionologist uh, and took meds for about three and a half years, almost, I think almost four years of my recovery. And at this point I don't take any medications. Okay. So it's just what, what changed, what changed the dynamic? I was honest. I was transparent. I was open. 
That's it. That's it. I mean, there's more. I say that's it, but I wasn't actively abusing substances too. So I was there. I was more in the moment and I was also being open and it changed things. So look, if you're feeling hesitant to talk to a clinician, just know that you can open up 100%. A lot of people are hesitant because they don't want to get cut off of the maybe the meds they're abusing or they have this idea that they're an authority figure so they're going to like stop you from using or some shit. That's not really the case. Um, so yeah, that's, that's it for today. If you can be open and transparent and honest with a clinician, it will greatly improve the level of care that you receive. And sometimes clinicians just fucking suck <laughs> and it's okay to get, to get a second opinion. You are paying for a service ultimately. So keep that in mind. That's it.